Hello. Uh, bear with me, I got a cold, so I'm, f I'm battling that a little bit. So, is it running through the team? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. I just know I'm. It's kicking my butt. So, I'm sorry. Trying, yeah, <laughs> it does. It, Does McCall do for one? Yeah, he, you know, every every it seemed like every day I came in here, you guys asked me, you know, what, you know, what's going on? How come he hasn't scored? I'm glad he did, you know, and, and it was a the timing was perfect. Couldn't have been a better time in that game, uh, you know, when they had a little bit of momentum, you know, we swung the momentum back in our direction and uh, huge play. A lot of credit goes to the guys that blocked. They did a nice job blocking and, and opened that thing up for him. He was able to hit it on the you know on the fly there, and and he's hard to catch once he gets that thing rolling. Yeah, it was good. If you had to pick, it would be after a score, right? Not the beginning of the half or beginning of the game. So. Uh, Any time. I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, if you had to pick, I mean, that was a perfect time just because they had so much momentum right there. You know, they, they had to pick and then they get scored right away. And, uh, you know, we, we got our crowd back into it and got our team back into it. So, you know, we have to sometimes, you know, I tell, I tell our guys all the time that on special teams, we have to provide a spark. And, and that was definitely one of those situations. How so many times in the playoffs? The games will come down to an overtime or a kick or whatever. So is there some way or something you do to kind of help take that extra load of pressure that could be a season-ending moment for Butker or whatever? Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it's both ways. I mean, you know, we lost the, you know, we feel like we lost the Titans game. You know, I mean, it was our fault because we didn't make the, you know, we had the two uh, um, screw-ups on field goal. Uh, you know, it could, so it could happen for you and it could happen against you. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, you have a lot more in the, in the good column, you know, in the end of the day when you, when you go back and look at it. So, uh, you know, we talk about how important every play is in, 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 in special teams. Uh, you know, each play is worth five plays. I mean, that's the way I explain it to them. So. Dave, so much of the discussion around the playoffs is quarterbacks and getting them as much experience as they can for these type of one-game scenarios. Uh, for you... How valuable is that for a kicker when you've been with someone for consecutive years and they had some playoff experience as well? I mean, it's it's good to know that he's been there, done that, and you're not thinking about that at least. And uh, you know, and it, it's good for the whole team, really. I mean, I heard uh, somebody said something about, oh, it was Hitchens. He said, you know, it's good to know that you have a guy like Bucker that he gives confidence to the whole team, and you know, and I think that's that's important. And. Mm -hmm. Uh, the fact that he has kicked big kicks in playoffs, that, that's going to really help us down the line here. It's hey, important. This, pros this prospect of Armani, uh, uh, yeah, of watch playing, getting more defensive snaps affect his special teams? Yes, yeah, it does. Um, you know, I mean, that's the way it works. I mean, guys move up that were, you know, he was a four-phase special teams guy. Now he's playing a lot of defense, so you have to, you have to make up for it in other ways. Uh, other guys will have to pick up. You know where he uh, can't go. Uh, we'll we'll put him on spots where we feel like he can really help us. Uh, playoffs are different. It's a one game elimination deal now too. So you're every play you're going to get try to get your best players on the field, if at all possible. So uh, you know that's that's going to be another thing. We'll ask guys some some guys that are playing a lot of offense and defense to play a little bit more on special teams. How did he grade out this year? Good. He was he was our he was our uh, he was our point leader uh, by one point. He beat out Pringle. So. You know, they. Uh, I think he had 120 20 points, and Pringle had 119. So, it was uh, it was a good battle for, between those two. How has his time as, as one of your core special teams players? Excuse me. Him, how has his time watched as one of your core special teams player helped him to make this transition to a potentially larger role on? Uh, it's every down, every every play that you play on special teams, you're developing yourself as an offensive or defensive player. You know, and, and you know you're blocking, you're tackling, and. Uh, just the game experience and how important each play is. You know, it's going to help him with confidence on defense. And uh, you know, it's not like he hasn't been practicing over there either. You know, so all that, all this time is is going to really help him. You know, and he has great leaders back there too. You know. So often you hear a lot of defensive backs saying that they like to train their eyes. Okay. Yeah. Have that? Have you seen that evolution with him? Transitioning from there's, there's, there's no question that I see development in players' uh, instincts, you know, through special teams. And, you know, that's, that's the only guys that I really can, you know, really uh, respond to. So, David, is it more so you being mindful because of the playoffs of some trickeration, or is there more enjoyment that you may present? We're, all, we're always thinking about, uh, you know, things that we can do as well as things that could happen to us, uh, especially in the playoffs. Uh, you know, uh, Peyton, you know, with his onside kick that he did in, in the Super Bowl. I mean, that was a, it was, to me, it was crazy, but he did it and he, it ended up 
working out for them. But you never know what you're going to get, so you have to be ready. And we talk about that, especially now with the one-game elimination. Football theory question for you, Dave. Um, in all your years of being a special teams coach in this league, how often have you had like a really, really good like multi-phase special teams guy that you could kind of tell like wasn't in love with the game of football? That wasn't in love with the game of football? Yeah. Well, Obviously no names, but, I'm, but I think there's a connection, right? Guys who love the game and do Yeah, yeah, there's no question. I mean, <laughs> I mean, special teams is dirty work, you know, and, and you're asking guys to do things that, you know, normal guys wouldn't do. So, you know, you got to love it to do at, at the level that we do it at. Has it ever happened? Like, where's it? Uh, not, not, you know, like, you, you got somebody in your mind. No, 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 actually, no. I don't. I, uh, okay. I definitely am not no. thinking of anyone in particular. I just kind of made that connection myself and was wondering if. Maybe there's some exceptions to a rule. Yeah. Not asking for a name, though. Just wondering if there's exceptions. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I think it's important that they love the game to be able to play. You know, I'm, I don't know how you could do it with it if, if you didn't, really. A couple more guys. Coach, you had mentioned Harrison Bucker earlier here. I'm going to take you back to your history and also Coach Reed. Reed, Reed when he was in Philadelphia, had one kicker. Yeah, David Akers. You had Robbie in Chicago. But what are sort of some of the qualities that you might see in Harrison that, that kind of like compares to the student of the game, uh, studies it, uh, watches everybody's kicks every week. Uh, he wears those guys out in the video room because he goes in there and he and he has his own little cubicle. They got him set up in there and he just he, he spends the whole day in there. Unlike other kickers, uh, you know, that might not be as studious. They might go hang out in the locker room, but he studies the game and he knows it, you know, in and out. Uh, he's a special guy. He's smart. He's very smart, and he's very uh, critical of himself. You know, and I think that's one of the common things that in a lot of the great kickers, you know, they look at themselves and they hold themselves accountable. You know, that's important. It's not somebody else's fault. It's not the holder's fault. It's not the snapper's fault. It's my fault, you know, and, and he does that. That's why he's great. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Let's go.